welcome to the reality revolution. Today's episode, we're going to discuss embracing this shift that we are currently experiencing into fourth density new earth. The new earth and fourth density has been a popular topic on my podcast. Obviously, it's mentioned every Sunday when we read from the Quo channelings, but I've dedicated several more episodes to the New Earth and our transition into it. I even wrote a book that I decided not to publish because of the sheer complexity of that book. I found that there was a lot more interest in discussions of the New Earth and our shift into this newer level of consciousness during covid when people had time to sit back and reflect on the changes that were happening in the world. But I simply ask you to look out into the world right now. Watch what's happening on the news. See the way that people interact. And there have been profound and significant changes on a global scale. People are acting differently. Right now, in the past, there were many racists and hateful people that existed within the fabric of our society that would wear hoods or masks and had no desire to share their actual identity to say these horrible and terrible things. Nowadays, they'll come right out and say it. You have politicians and leaders that will say the most horrible and terrible things. You have groups of people that will say the most hateful and violent things when in the past these things would be implied not necessarily said outright part of the reason for that is that the veil is being lifted and our subconscious and unconscious mind is now becoming conscious so we're hearing people reveal who they truly are and this is happening more and more there's more violence People are more willing to take violent action. I have found it recently in my reactions to things. Recently, I was at a restaurant with my wife. Somebody spilled some water on my lap. And I, for a very brief moment, got angry about it. And my response was completely unaligned with the way I would normally act. As I went into meditation, I realized that this was going to be a phenomenon for my own consciousness and a catalyst that I needed to deal with that more and more my unconscious thoughts and thinking would start to burst forward. For me, it would happen with microaggressions and little reactions that I made that I may not have had in the past. But I want to discuss what is happening in our shift into fourth density. This shift into new earth has been discussed by hundreds of authors. In particular, the shift into fourth density and new earth consciousness was discussed quite extensively in 2012 when many people believed the mayan calendar had predicted that we were shifting into a a new earth environment in the law of one material they indicated that the earth was moving into an entirely different environment of light and consciousness that would begin to really take form on december 21st 2012. many people have theorized and discussed and have channeled different beings that have discussed this transition that we are going through according to the law of one most planets go through these different phases of transition in consciousness and on earth we've been experiencing what is referred to as third density this third density environment is made up of the light and matter and animals environment ecology and material that is all around us in this environment our subconscious mind is separated from our conscious mind. There is a veil. We have some slight access to it when we dream and meditate, but in most cases, we don't have access to this subconscious portion of ourselves. What is happening in a new earth environment, our consciousness is changing. And you often hear references to either fifth dimension or fourth density. Both of these things can be true. Dimension really denotes a place that you're going to. And fourth density is much more complicated. The way I want you to visualize this is that it's like we're in an ocean. We're entering a different sort of water. The way that it's explained in the law of one material 
as density can be somewhat confusing. In each density of creation, particles contain a certain density of light. The higher the density, the more densely packed with light a light beam or photon is. Now this is important because we know that all the matter around us, the chair that you're sitting on or the bed that you're laying on, is made up of matter of vibrating light particles. Check out my episode on the secret of light. Everything around us, including our bodies, is made up of light particles. But if the scientists had the ability to really analyze the photons of light, they would notice that there are different forms of photon and some are packed more densely with light and information. The more densely packed the light, the more intelligent energy is available within it. Those of Quo say about higher densities, the word density is misleading, for it would somehow suggest that each succeeding density is more pallid or frail. The opposite, however, is true, that in each density further than the last, there is a higher density of light. Bruce Parrott, a scholar on the Law of One, and the physicist named Larson, which is discussed in the Law of One, explains the distinction between thought planes and the outer planes. What I understood from the raw material is that density is a measurement of the overall complexity of some structure, form, or entity in a temporal rather than spatial sense. To use raw terms, the density of an object is the size of the time space it occupies, whereas the volume is the size of the space time it occupies. Bruce is using Ra's terms for space-time for the physical universe and time-space for the metaphysical or cosmic universe. He's saying that he does not think that Ra group's term of density refers to the normal physical universe at all, but rather the metaphysical universe which interpenetrates our physical world. Bruce explains your densities are basically groupings of levels of complexity. First density is the simplest form inanimate matter, body, when mind joins body into mind-body complexes. Second density is reached, and we see it as a simple life form like plants. When spirit gets in the act, we have our existence, the mind-body-spirit complex, third density, three connected components, the animal kingdom, and a very complex entity. This is the way evolution increases complexity, and density is a measurement of complexity. To put it simply, the more ingredients in the soup of dimensions interacting to form an entity, the more complex the recipe is, and thus the higher its density. And Ra has a pretty simple kitchen, only seven major ingredients, the seven dimensions forming the first through seven densities. So our third density light has three aspects, or dimensions within its photon, which Bruce calls body light, mind light, and spirit light which you can call beingness light, consciousness light, and self-awareness light. In each succeeding density, the light contains the characteristics from earlier densities, but places them within the new photon's dimensional signature. The fourth density addition then would be love light, the fifth ingredient understanding light, and the sixth density unity light, and the seventh density would add completion light, or the gateway to intelligent infinity light. But for short, they are all light. The basic building block of each density being the photon of that density. Bruce's very interesting letter on densities as used by Ra includes the provocative thought which places our minds or consciousness which survives the bodily death in time-space and therefore specifically sets us as metaphysical entities in the time-space or metaphysical sector. So I want you to visualize this. The earth is constantly moving around the sun and the sun is moving around the galaxy and we move into different sectors of space like a clockwork. And as we move into this fourth density space, which we started to enter in 2012, and each day, the amount of fourth density light particles becomes more and more available. There are fourth density light particles that are interacting right now with third density light particles. And more and more, these fourth density light particles make significant changes in our reality environment. There are major things that happen because of this. As we start to access these fourth density light particles, just by understanding that it means that there's a greater density of information, there are some implications that we can come together with. First of all, increased complexity. With the planet transitioning 
to a state of greater complexity the overall structure and functioning of ecosystems, organisms, and even physical laws governing the universe might experience changes. This could lead to new forms of life, more intricate interactions between species, and novel physical phenomena. Everything becomes more complex. Every environment becomes more complex. More complex TV shows, more complex movies, more complex food, more complex interactions. The science becomes more complex. Our lives become more complex. A lot of times people imagine a new earth environment and we say, oh, it's going to be so nice like heaven. Everything's perfect. But there's a greater level of complexity. It's part of our spiritual path. We have to deal with this complexity. We have been guided through a level of complexity pretty much every year of our lives over the past hundred years the earth has become more complex and so we can see this complexity increasing so the future will simply be more complex and that means that you need to embrace complexity and you also need to be aware of its effects on you and there are ways to simplify your life Sometimes this complexity can be overwhelming. We have been raised in a less complex environment. Third density is much less complex than fourth density. And so if you feel that this complexity has become overwhelming, you simplify your life. You get rid of some of the stuff that you have, or you minimize the certain goals and habits that you have. You try to minimize the complexity of your life. Or on the other end, you embrace this complexity and you make it a part of your life. The second aspect of this transition into a new earth environment is enhanced information transmission. If light particles or photons were denser and carried more information, communication and data transfer among organisms become more advanced and efficient. This could potentially lead to new methods of communication among species, possibly bringing the gap between different life forms or ever enabling telepathic-like abilities. And more and more, we will be able to psychically communicate with each other, telepathically sending pictures, feelings, different senses to each other, because these light particles are available to us and we can send them and interact with them. So as we do that, we have greater ability to communicate. And this is what is happening now. We see people that are becoming more sensitive psychically, and there is more interest in psychic transmissions. More people are channeling. It's because that we are, have greater information transmission. Third, there's huge evolutionary changes. The increased complexity and information density of light particles might drive accelerated evolutionary processes. Organisms that can harness and utilize this enhanced information could experience rapid adaptations leading to the emergence of highly intelligent and interconnected life forms. Just watch what happens with our kids, with my kids. I can see huge evolutionary changes in mind already happening. The way they interact with technologies and themselves, everything seems so easy. They're able to interact in a complicated environment and it's what they've gotten used to. And this has led to different interactions and huge changes in the world around us. Fourth is technological advancements. Will be a result of these dense light photon particles. Human societies would likely see a dramatic leap in technological process due to the availability of more information-rich energy sources. This could lead to breakthroughs in fields like artificial intelligence and quantum computing and communicating technologies. We can already see it. AI is taking over. We're seeing the effects of artificial intelligence everywhere. We're seeing it in our art, in our music. We're seeing it in our politics and the access to this technological information, I believe, is a direct result of our interacting in fourth density light. More and more of these technologies will come. Now, fourth density can be positive or negative, just like anything else. So it could bring terrible changes or wonderful changes, as we've discussed previously. It's all how we adapt and utilize these technological advancements. But it will be an aspect of fourth density. We may even reach a point where we move beyond all technological advancements, but it is a part and parcel of our interacting in these fourth density light environments. The fifth is perception and consciousness. With denser light particles, carrying more information, perception and consciousness could undergo significant transformation. Beings on this new earth will have heightened senses, expanded awareness and very altered states of consciousness. 
you will begin to become more psychically attuned. You'll hear better. You'll see better. Everything in your environment will continue to change and expand. And if you notice that your consciousness is changing, it is because of accessing this fourth density light particle. In my interviews, I regularly ask, have you noticed the changes that are happening in the world? Every single time, the people that I talk to are saying that they identify these crazy changes that are happening in the world around us. Why are more people interested in meditation and manifestation? It's because these things happen faster and are more intense. I believe that if you were meditating 20 years ago and using manifestation techniques and exercises, it was much slower and less intense. And so it was easier to say, hey, maybe this doesn't work or to deny its reality. More and more people are using visualization and meditation exercises in this rich fourth density environment and their realities are becoming real. And more often people's fears are becoming real. That's why the world seems crazy. You see more wars and you see more terrible things happening in the world. It's because they're interacting in an environment where their fears come up. So people that are not on a certain level of consciousness are completely reliant on their fears. These fears manifest because feelings manifest. And so you're seeing fears manifest all over the world in small stories, in small communities, and in world wars. It's happening because people are seeing their fears become real. It is one reason I find a great motivation with my podcast to take people away from fear and to guide them and to show them ways that you can use your mind to manifest positive realities. Because if we don't, then people will simply fall into the fear that they have for their everyday lives and it will just get worse and worse. Your perception and consciousness is changing. The way I see it is that as the earth enters into this environment, it's just a little bit more of this fourth density light every day. And it works like water. Some of the third density light is slowly leaving and some more fourth density light is entering, mixing in with all these other energies that come from our past environment. We don't notice it very much like a frog that is boiling in water does not know that it's boiling as it slowly gets hotter and hotter. That is what's happening to us. It's a drip, 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 a slow and very minor change that is happening in our environment. I believe that we we're likely to have a larger, more intense change in our environment because of our lack of positive evolutionary changes on a spiritual level that there were direct efforts made by higher entities to slow down the integration of this fourth density light. That is what my higher self has informed me. And there is no way to stop this. Over time, there's going to be a little bit more and more and the world that we're going to see is going to change. Now, the sixth thing to identify is environmental and geophysical changes. The shift to an earth might cause alterations in the environment and geophysical processes. These changes could include shifts in climate patterns, geological activity, and the distribution of natural resources. Ra even mentions that there is a spiritual warming that goes on that may be related to global warming, that all planets in the universe undergo a warming process when there is a shift from third to fourth density. Now, the really amazing, unique thing, if you are not aware of it, is that we're in a very special time. In general, third density lasts 75,000 years on most planets in the universe, and that we've gone through three 25,000 year periods. We are at the end of the third density period, and the way that Ra explains it, we don't shift into fourth density automatically when we die. We continue to reincarnate over and over in a third density environment until we transcend. And then in this final phase, the phase that we're in now, once you move on to death, you will walk the stairs of light and you are given the option of moving into fourth density. So understanding this is critically important to your soul and the future of what happens to you and where you end up in your next life. The seventh thing that will happen as we shift into a fourth density environment is there will be ethical and philosophical implications. The profound changes in the nature of life, communication, and consciousness could raise challenging ethical and philosophical questions, 
societies would need to grapple with new moral dilemmas and reevaluate their understanding of life and intelligence. I'm sorry, but being woke is part of shifting into fourth density because you become aware of the oneness. You become aware that all are one. So when you see somebody suffering, you are seeing yourself suffering. And so when people speak out, others who are close to that fourth density light particle are going to say, well, that's weird. Why are they complaining so much? Because in the past we wouldn't complain about these things, but now we do. We can relate to others. We have desire to shift our own identities and these things happen. And it appears that there is a group of people that are trying to stop this transition that we're going into. And that is a result of shifts in consciousness that are happening on the planet. These shifts are happening all around. The eighth thing is you need to become tuned into your shadow, become aware of it, catalyze the experience of your shadow. This can be done a number of ways. If you have something that you've pushed back into your conscious mind, then you need to come to grips with it. It doesn't go away. It festers, it grows, and it grows more intensely because of this fourth density light. You can't ignore anything that's happened in your life. You need to go through the releasing technique that I have in another episode. But what will happen is the shadow will emerge in short little bits and pieces as you meditate, really tune in and use affirmations. In my own case, then this shadow side of your subconscious mind will pop up in very unusual circumstances. So if you come into terms with that shadow side, then you'll be better at this. But some things are important that you do, and that is to recognize your triggers. Pay attention to the situations or events that tend to elicit strong emotional responses from you. Being aware of your triggers can help you anticipate and prepare for them. You should practice mindfulness. Fourth density light is utilized best when you're in a mindful state in the present moment. It involves being fully present and aware of your thoughts, emotions, and bodily sensations without judgment. By practicing mindfulness, you can create a mental space between a triggering event and your response, allowing you to choose a more thoughtful reaction. Your reactions become important. The way you react to environments and situations due to this heightened light particle that's available to you is important. You know how to act in most cases, but you won't have control of your reactions until you really focus on them. So I would recommend that you pause before reacting to anything. When you encounter a triggering situation, take a deep breath, give yourself a moment to process your emotions before responding. This can prevent impulsive reactions that you might regret later. Challenge your thoughts. Sometimes our reactions are based on irrational beliefs or assumptions that are deeply embedded in our unconscious mind. And when brought into consciousness, they fall apart. So challenge your thoughts. When you feel a strong emotional response, question the underlying thoughts and consider whether they are accurate or exaggerated because more and more of your unconscious is going to become conscious. And everybody's going to see the dark side, the shadow of you. It's going to be that way for everybody. And so if you do the work and you take the time, you can limit the way that the shadow expresses itself because the shadow is expressing itself because the veil is being removed and this information is available. You should practice assertive communication, express your feelings and needs clearly and respectfully without resorting to aggressive or passive aggressive behavior. It can prevent misunderstandings and unnecessary conflicts. Set boundaries. Don't ruminate on negative thoughts or events. Seek support if you're having trouble struggling with these unusual negative thoughts that come up. Seek out support. And there are people that are available to you that will more than happily help to serve you and help you. And then practice self-compassion. Be compassionate to yourself. There's some sides that are going to come up as you allow the unconscious mind to become fully part of your conscious mind. And when you allow this to happen, be compassionate, forgive yourself, be understanding. Nobody's perfect. Acknowledge that you may have emotional reactions, but it's essential to learn and 
grow from them. Eventually, within the next 20 years, the environment is going to be so intense that it's all about what sort of thoughts that you have. So you sit there in this deeply embedded fourth density environment with light particles all around and you think something must go wrong. There's something I need to be fearful of. And then boom, you will manifest something to be fearful of. It will come into your reality. And then you're going to be like, I need to have a gun to protect myself. And boom, you'll have a gun immediately. You'll be able to manifest material objects very quickly. And then you'll be shooting at what it is you fear. And then you'll be expecting to die. If you're in a fear-based cycle, a loop that is occurring over and over again, you're not going to live long in a fourth density environment. You can thrive in a fourth density environment through a number of means and a number of ways. Now, in my book that I wrote that I decided not to publish, I have a chapter on how to live and thrive in a fourth density environment. And I list a number of ways. Of course, meditation. The more you meditate and come into tune with yourself, your higher self, you'll find that this is easier and easier to come to grips with. You should become aware of the mirroring effect. You begin to see the mirroring effect of your thoughts and actions in the environment around you. This mirroring effect is one of the key principles of the new earth. It's discussed by Neville Goddard, Vadim Zeeland, Ra, and Quo. And the mirroring effect is a key part of your movement through new dimensions. There is one self, and as the fourth density light reveals itself to you, the people around you become mirrors to you. Your inner thoughts are reflected in a three-dimensional mirror. You're interacting with other God selves, like attracts like. These souls are similar to you. They are in the same soul stream. Remember always that what you see in the mirror, you cannot change by changing the mirror. It is always your own inner thoughts and actions that are creating what you see in the mirror. The fourth density light amplifies this mirroring effect. This is one of the side effects of light particles that carry a greater density of information. Continually remind yourself of this fact. You're now aware that this light particle within it is the ultimate upgrade on every level. It opens you up to a perpetual Wi-Fi connection with your higher self. This higher self is the one that has stood with you during every step, who is you going back and aiding you. This is a being that exists within a realm in which all of time is available to you. And you can interact with yourself. You can change whatever you want. The entire archive of multiverses is available in this new light density. To see love, act loving. To see prosperity, act prosperous. To be healthy, act healthy. You will always see a perfect reflection of yourself with all you see. Even the birds are a part of your reflection. Even the sun. It is all within you. You are now more than your body. You are now the mirror. You are the archive of reflections throughout time. You must take action first to change the reflection. You can change the light in your reflection from within your heart, which is the sort of the processing factory of this amazing fourth density light. Your heart is now opened fully to this new light, and you must learn how to interact with this fifth dimensional reflection that includes time and space. You control and program the light. You slowly form a relationship with the light. You use the light to bless the objects around you. You empower the objects around you. To become fountains of energy, you create art that is like an energy factory of light. Everywhere you go, you change the reflection within, and all those around you who are unaware of this light will adjust to this light. You begin to change the energies and the very fabric of space around you. Those who shift the earliest become the reality projectors. Beings that are not just reflecting but projecting reality. The shift moves you from the feminine to the masculine principle. You are the projector. You are the reflector. The greater the light, the more reflection is altered. You are the light generator. So you begin to program the light. These particles that are all around you are neutral and available to be programmed. The more you move into meditation, the more you learn astral travel and your ability to enter into quantum realms, you begin to learn how to program the light. As an exercise, close your eyes at random times during the day and for 30 seconds, shrink your consciousness smaller and smaller each second. Imagine yourself getting smaller and smaller. The size of an insect, a germ, a virus, a molecule, an atom. Try to move beyond this space. Make it your intention to see the new fourth density light. Once you find one, order it to take whatever shape you desire. At first you'll get distracted, and then it will seem difficult to manipulate the light. The more you do it, the better you will get at it. Eventually... 
you will be able to transform into any shape, expand them, and access the information inside of them. This is the same power at the atom in your heart, which controls all the atoms in your body. This is the central life force that has made your heart beat perfectly throughout your life. Each of these light particles are of the same power. They are all around you. They are not your grandmother's light. This is a new form of light available to you as a potential in the quantum field of the new earth. You can now program light particles in groups. They will do your bidding and be used for projection, blessing, inspiration, and shifting. The possibilities are endless. Quantum computers and microscope technologies may reach a point in which this light particle can be detected, just as discussed in the physics of Dewey Larson. You can use these light photons to travel instantaneously in time and space. The whole universe and its many galaxies will be opened up to you. You can program a light particle to travel instantaneously to the future of your current timeline and come back to you. Ask it to protect your home or bless your food and water. Give it to your pets. Place it in your paint that you use. Put it in the ink of your pen. Change the light around your home. Program it. You now have 90 million years to master this fourth density light because that's how long fourth density is. That's how long you'll be living in it. This is a powerful and magnificent drama and game created by the Creator for our next incarnation. We have now graduated into an ever more complex universe and it is our duty to learn how to exist in this environment to serve others to our maximum ability. This is like heaven, a heaven-like existence, learning the subtle powers of love and light. You must learn how to use it. The light works best and most efficiently when using it for others. See anyone struggling with finances as prosperous See those struggling with bad health as healed. See those who are lonely as finding love. See them as you would like to be. Imagine the most amazing life for everyone you see. And with this light energy that you are interacting with, great things will happen. The next thing that you will gain access to is different states through dreams. In a dream, you can start flying. You can create a table out of a chair. And with lucid dreaming, that's when the whole game changes and everything changes around you. There's so many other possibilities. Numbering codes will be a part of this. There's a whole index of experiences and sigils. There's a whole various groups of technologies that will be available to you. You can program water. You can program the earth. You can actively utilize this light particle in all the elements. You can use it to grow plants. It is all available to you. You must embrace this shift into fourth density, new earth. And when you do, everything will change. Right now in this moment, floating within your mind and all around your environment in your home are these advanced fourth density light particles. And they are available to you. They will have an effect on the way you act and the way other people around you are acting. Become aware of it. Just accept it. And then as you then become aware of the way that others are revealing their subconscious, forgive them. People are going to get angry with you for no reason. People are going to reveal darker sides of their personalities. Forgive them and send them the light. You have to forgive them to forgive yourself because you're going to also make mistakes because the environment is more complex, but you're going to get better and better at it. And as you become better and better at it, great things will happen. Embrace this transition into fourth density new earth. You can find all episodes of The Reality Revolution at therealityrevolution.com. And welcome to The Reality Revolution.